All right, now we're going to talk about division of polynomials. Um, there's two ways to do this. There is what we call long division and then synthetic division. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to do the same problem, uh, the same two problems twice. So I'm going to do these both as long division, and I'm going to do these both in synthetic. And you're going to see the pluses and minuses of the pros and cons of both, okay? So let's talk about long division first. Before I do long division with polynomials, let's go back in time to like, was it, I think, third grade? And let's do a long division problem. Let's do 102 divided by 8. And let's just remember how this works, step by step. Does 8 go into 1? No. So we go to the next two terms. 10. Does 8 go into 10? It does. How many times? One time. Then what do we do? We do 1 times 8, which is 8, and we write 8 down here. Then we subtract 10 minus 8, and we get 2. Obviously, 8 doesn't go into 2, so then we carry down the next number, which is 2, and we get 22. Does 8 go into 22? Yes, it does. How many times? Well, the, the biggest number it can go into that's, that's uh, less than 22 is 16, so that would mean 2 times. So I could say 2 Two times 8 is 16, write 16, and then I subtract. 22 minus 16 is 6. And so we would say that this is a remainder of 6. Well, this is really like saying 12 plus 6 eighths, or we could say 12 and 6 eighths. Obviously, we could reduce that to make it 12 and 3 fourths, or we could even say 12.75. Both of these would be acceptable answers, right? Okay, that's how we do Long division, just with regular old numbers. I remind you of that because the process for doing long division with synthetic is pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same steps. You just have to keep it organized. So let me show you what I mean. Let's take a look at this first problem. x cubed plus, minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 5, all divided by x minus 2. Now, there probably should be like parentheses here so that you know you're dividing that whole thing by that whole thing. Um, so just know that. And let me show you what this looks like. Just like before I did 102 divided by 8, this is what's going to go underneath the long division bar. So it's going to look like this. x cubed minus 4x squared plus 2x plus 5. And when I said divided by 8, I put the 8 over here on the left. So I'm going to put x minus 2 right here. A couple things to just note. Um, this one is a nice, neat one because... I have a cubed, a squared, a 1, and then a 0 degree term. If you are missing a term, like let's say there was no 2x, and it just said x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5, what you would want to do is you'd want to put a 0x here as a placeholder. That's a really important step for helping you stay organized. Now, you don't have to do that. There are ways to work around that. But usually, if you don't do that, students mess up. Okay, let's do this. All we have to do when we're doing long division, is look at the first term. Every time we just start off by looking at the first term, and we say, um, does this x go into x cubed? Yes, it does. How many times? Well, I'd have to multiply it. What would I have to multiply this by to get to x cubed? Well, it'd be x squared, right? x squared times x would equal x cubed. The squared column is right here. Just like before up here, right? Like you could say like, just to kind of make the reference, this is like the hundreds column, the tens column, and the ones column. Same idea, but now we're talking about degrees. But the same, it's the same pattern. So, since the squared column is right here, I'm going to say, yes, x squared. And I'm going to say, x squared times x gives me x cubed. But then I also have to multiply it by the negative 2. If you think about it, I'm like distributing to both these terms. So, x squared times negative 2 is negative 2x squared. All right, if you remember the next step is, it was to subtract, but you're subtracting this whole thing, so you got to keep that in mind. x cubed minus x cubed, well, that's just zero. That's beautiful. That's what you want, all right? But over here, it gets a little bit funky. I got negative 4 minus negative 2x squared. Well, that's really like saying plus 2x squared, so this is negative 2x squared. And then I'm going to bring down this 2x, just like I did before. And now the process starts over again. What times x equals negative 2x squared? Obviously, I don't need this here anymore. You can just disregard that. I don't even usually write that. I'm just showing you kind of what happens. 
So, so what times x equals negative 2x squared? Well, it'd be negative 2x. So I'm going to put a negative 2x here. So negative 2x times x makes um, negative 2x squared. But remember, I have to do it to both things. So what's negative 2 times negative 2? That's positive 4x. Positive 4x. And then I'm going to subtract. Okay, a lot going on here. The first two terms top and bottom here, these should always cancel each other out, and it does. Negative 2x squared minus negative, that you can think of it as a plus, so it's like saying negative 2x squared plus 2x squared just gives us a zero. Again, I wrote it here, but I don't actually usually write it. Then I have 2x minus 4x. Well, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so I'm going to write negative 2x. All right, then I'm going to bring down my 5 plus 5. Okay, well, once again, what times x equals negative 2x. Well, that's simple. It's just negative 2. So let's do the math here. Negative 2 times x makes negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 makes positive 4. Once again, I'm subtracting. These cancel each other out. 0. And then 5 minus 4 is 1. All right. So just like before, we, would, we could say that there's a remainder of 1. But what does that really mean? Okay, remember I said over here, I said it's a remainder of 6, but I just put it over 8. I said it's really 6 eighths. We can do the exact same thing here. Let me show you. So I can say this answer is x squared minus 2x minus 2 plus 1 over x minus 2 since that is what I was dividing by. And now I have divided this problem. It does have a remainder, but that's okay. I still did the long division. All right. There we go. We have done long division. We've solved this problem. Let's take a look at example number two, also using long division. So let's go ahead and set it up. I'm going to need a lot of space on this one. So 12x cubed minus 11x squared, plus 9x, plus 8. That's all underneath my division bar. And I should have given myself some more space here. Okay, so I moved it down a little bit. And I'm going to do 4x plus 3 over here. Same exact process. I'm saying what times this equals this first term. So obviously I would need to multiply by a 3 to get to 12, and I only have 1x here, so I need to get an x squared. So I'm going to say 3x squared. And since it's an x squared, I'm going to put it on top of the x squared column. Let's actually do the math. 3 times 4 is 12. x squared times x is x cubed. But I can't stop there. I have to do the second term. So 3x squared times 3 is 9x squared. Then I subtract. Obviously the first two terms cancel out. Negative 11, don't forget that I'm subtracting here, minus 9 is negative 20. So I'm at negative 20x squared. Bring down the next term. And I'm ready to ask the next question. What times 4x makes negative 20x squared? Well, that would be a negative 5 and another x, so negative 5x. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And x times x is x squared. I can't just do that. i got to do the 3, 2. So negative 5 times 3 is negative 15x. And then I have to subtract. These cancel. 9 minus negative 15. That's kind of like, that's a double negative. So that's like adding. So 9 plus 15 is 24x. Bring down the 8. Just doing the same thing over and over again, right? What? times 4x makes 24, 24x. Well, that would be 6. So I'm going to say plus 6. 6 times 4x is 24x. 6 times 3 is 18. And I have to subtract again. These cancel each other out. 8 minus 18 is negative 10. So I could say remainder negative 10. Or what we really want is this would equal 3x squared minus 5x plus 6.
minus 10. I'm saying minus 10 because it's a negative 10. Um, over 4x plus 3. Right? And so once again, remember that anything that I'm like, whatever I'm dividing by, that's going to be in the denominator here underneath the remainder. And there we go. There's two long division examples for you. However, there are other ways to do this. There is something called synthetic division. Synthetic division can be a lot easier. So let's do this. It's the exact same problem as example one, but now we're going to use synthetic division. And let me show you how we do this. For synthetic division, all we care about is the coefficients. And we need to know the zero of whatever we're dividing by. The zero that what we're dividing by. So what's the zero right here? It's two. You always start with that. So I'm going to put a two here. Then what you do is you list your coefficients. Well, the first coefficient is 1, then it's negative 4, then it's 2, and then it's 5. And then I like to do a little line here, and I like to do a little box right here, because this is going to be where my remainder goes. I'll show you how this works. The math here is actually really simple. You always bring your first term down. That's just a 1. And then from here, you multiply and add. Let me show you what I mean. You do 2 times 1 is 2. You're going to write a 2 right here. So I did I did 2 times this number to get a 2. Then I add negative 4 and positive 2 makes negative 2. Then I'm going to do 2 times negative 2, and I'm going to get negative 4. Then I'm going to add 2 and negative 4 make negative 2. Then I'm going to multiply 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then I'm going to add to be 1. Now, here's what you have to do. You have to put your x's back in, but it's not that bad. You always want to start with x to the 0, which really means there's no x there. This term always, this should be your constant. Um, also, same thing as before. Remember, if I wasn't, like if I didn't have a 2x here, if it was just missing, I would need to put a 0 here as a placeholder. Or for any term of that nature, you need to put a 0 as a placeholder if you don't have it. All right, so then I have x to the 0, x to the 1, x squared, you just count it from there. So what does that mean? That means my answer is x squared minus 2x minus 2 plus a remainder 1. But remember, I can just put 1 over whatever I divided by, which is really x minus 2. And that should be the exact same thing as what we got on example 1, but we did it with synthetic division. Just check. Yep, the exact same problem. So here's my takeaway. When... The, when you're dividing by something simple like this, where there's no a value in front of what you're dividing by, then I think synthetic is a lot easier. However, if you get a problem like this, where see how there's now an a value of 4, not 1, I think that synthetic is actually harder. But maybe you'll like it still. Maybe you'll think this is still the easier way to go, and you'll still do it this way. That's fine. Let me show you how we would do a problem like this with synthetic. Let's first, let's just write it out like a long division problem, kind of. Like, not really a long division, but just a division problem. So, to really do synthetic, we really have to kind of think of this A value as 1. And right now it's not 1, it's 4. So what we're allowed to do is we're allowed, so that we can make that 1, we can just divide everything by 4. So that's what we have to do. It's kind of like we're going to fake it. We're going to fake that the a value is 1 to make this work. So what would that look like? Well, that would make the this term over here, right? These would kind of cancel out. And so then I would have x plus 3 fourths. And remember, the number that goes in the 0 or in this top left corner is the 0. So the zero here would be negative three-fourths, right? Because negative three-fourths plus three-fourths makes positive three-fourths. So I'm going to put a negative three-fourths here. Then I'm going to list all the coefficients. But the coefficients after I divided them by four. Well, 12 divided by four is three. This one is just a fraction, so I'm just going to write 11 fourths. This is also just a fraction, so I'm going to write positive nine fourths. And then eight divided by four is two. Here's my little line. Here's my little box. That's where my, my remainder is going to go. All right, same process as before. I'm going to bring down the first numbers, 3. Then I'm going to multiply. 
negative 3 fourths times 3 is negative 9 fourths. Then I'm going to add. If I add these together, they're already common denominators. I get negative 20 divided by 4, but that's a nice neat number of negative 5. Negative 3 fourths times negative 5 is positive 15 fourths. And then I'm going to add, they're already common denominators. 9 and 15 makes 24, but 24 over 4 is 6. Then I have to multiply again. Negative 3 fourths times 6 is negative 18 over 4. That does reduce, but it's just negative 9 halves. So what I really have to do, I have two, I gotta add these things together, but they're not common denominators. So I'm gonna make them common denominators. So two is the same thing as four divided by two. And now they're common denominators. When I add these together, I get negative five over two. Okay, there's one last step on the at the end here that is a little bit tricky. This is where students will often make a mistake. We're going to do the same thing as like filling in our, our variables. So this is, this six doesn't have an X in it. This is X to the one, this is X squared. And we have the first part of our equation, but this is our remainder. And if you think about it, to get this remainder, remember we divided by four. So it's not really our remainder. It's not our true remainder. We divided by four. So to get our real remainder, what we have to do is we have to multiply back by four. So we have to take this value in here and we have to multiply it by whatever we divided by earlier. So what is negative five halves times four? Well, that'd be negative 20 divided by two, it's negative 10. And so that's your real remainder. So the correct answer to this problem would be three X squared minus five X plus six. And then we could say minus 10 divided by four X plus three because your real remainder is negative 10. So maybe you could see kind of why I don't really like to do synthetic when the a value isn't one. A lot of things to remember, you got to divide everything, you get a bunch of fractions, then at the end, you have to do, um, you have to multiply back by whatever you divided by. Now, maybe you're cool with that. If so, that's fine. I just want to show you both of the ways to do it. That's it for this video. I'll see you guys on the next one.